gotta be the man! You gotta beat the man! This is my yard now. I will fight anyone and everyone. Here he comes! Where is he? Cactus Jack! Your arms are just too short to box with God. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Future Heels podcast. My name is Jacob Best of the Realm Hotter. I'm Brian Bryman Peacock. I'm confused as hell. <laughs> oh, I'm not. We just watched the the new the uh, Bullet Club video. Being what is the, the channel called? Being the Elite. Yes. Where they invade Raw, and what just happened at the end? They found the Stooge. The Stooge. Okay. Now, as far as wrestling go, the Stooges are uh, the McMahon Stooges. Oh my God, Pat Patterson and, and Briscoe. You need to watch more Being the Elites. I do. I really do. Okay, so when they got their first cease and desist um, for Fuck the Revival. Okay. You might have to censor that. Um, <laughs> no? Because <laughs> um, oh, it's... Yeah. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> when uh, Cody answers the phone, he said it's a WWE stooge. No. Oh. So they found the stooge. And they put him down. And supposedly, it's Brian Danielson. Oh, okay. I got that. So. <laughs> That's funny. I wonder if he was really on the phone when uh, Cody said it was a stooge. I don't know. But I think, okay, so here's my. Yeah, you opinion. said you had something to bring up. Anyone who doesn't think that everyone here is working together. Right. It's fucking dumb. At least on but, some uh, level. Exactly, yeah. But I love it. <laughs> I think it's great. I feel like that would have got shut down pretty quick. They, they should have got shut down pretty quick. Well, they were causing a big ruckus. Sort Somebody of. said, leave them. Yeah. Somebody yeah. did. Oh, yeah. It wasn't Vince. Okay, no, they invaded Raw, so Daniel Bryan wouldn't necessarily have been there. Would it have been Triple H? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe all we can do is speculate, and we yeah. just just talked about in the last episode how much we hate speculation. But the reason I wanted to this bring this speculation's up, fun though, because this is speculation. This is fun <clears> though. <throat> this is just doing it. <laughs> yeah. God, it's so great. I'm so glad I got some Bullet Club merch today. What did you get? I got the Villain Club sticker. Okay. I should have got more. But man, shirts and Hot Topic are expensive. How much were they? I think they were like $25. That's not bad. That's not terrible, but dang, Hot Topic. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's probably how much they are in the Young Bucks store, youngbucksmerch.com. Uh. <laughs> I don't know. I'll look it up. Well, when you... Matt threw the shirt, he did say, this is a $20 bill. I don't yeah. usually do this. <laughs> so they probably are about, if they were 20 I think I would have bought one. Dude, the, oh my god, they, like, I was gonna say the marketing machine behind them, but they are the marketing machine. Yeah, that's what it seems like. God, they're so brilliant, because they just showed a commercial, they had little pins, and stickers, and flags, and t-shirts, Yeah, they're... and now there's a cease and desist t-shirt, they just... I, I would buy it, I want that shirt. <laughs> they don't know where to stop. No, they're like Kiss, they're like Kiss of pro wrestling. <laughs> They're like the WWE. They're like the WWE of pro wrestling. The two of them. <laughs> yeah. What the uh, hell? It. I got. I got to give so many props to those guys. They are just so good. I love the line, Finn. We're here to rescue you. <laughs> you got to go watch that video if you haven't watched it. It is absolutely fantastic. Being the Elite, episode seventy-three. There might even be a newer one. Uh, no, I don't think so. But all of freaking, all of being the elite's good. I know, I've only watched a few. Uh, I really need to, oh, you know what? I'm not working this week. Um, I have YouTube Red. It would um, not take me very long. They're only like 10 minutes long, right? Yeah, give or take. But between their Twitter, between their Instagram, between their and then not to mention Pro Wrestling Tees and the New Japan website and, like... Hot Topic. Hot Topic. I don't know if you said that, but... How do these assholes find this much time? <laughs> and they're wrestling. Yeah. 
Well, I guess there's a lot of time on the road. It's just, oh my god, I give them so many props. You like, and, like somebody who was like a decent wrestler, right? But these guys are also f- fucking fantastic in the ring. Yeah, call the call them spot shows or whatever terminology you want to use. At the and end of get the off day, your fucking high horse and enjoy the fucking match. Exactly, <laughs> you are entertained the entire time. Yep. And when they lose, it's fine. When they win, it's great. Just I don't think I've ever seen a young buck, bad young bucks match. No. I'm sure they're out there from like a while ago. That would be a fascinating journey to take, from like oh, yeah. the beginning of the young bucks to now. Mm-hmm. And then not to mention Bullet and and Marty and like I don't know a whole lot about Hangman Page. What That's did they good. do? They stole his flag. Yeah, what I don't did know he what say? Happened, right? I've missed a couple episodes being the <laughs> Okay, so maybe maybe I'll be able to get caught up on that. But uh yeah, youngbucksmerch.com. It looks like such a legit site. Yeah. I'm looking Je- Oh my that. god, Jeremy Buck and Max Buck. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz that's what they were in TNA. That's so that Okay, see there's a low point in their career, TNA. TNA trading cards, Generation Me. God, what a terrible name. You can tell it's not them making that decision. Right. Being the Elite, 1999. Bucks of Youth. <laughs> Bad Luck Fale, that's cool. See, look, Bad Luck Fale is 1999. Go back up. Oh, yeah. yeah their shitty TNA ones are five bucks. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they also recognize they know what they have. Yeah. No one wants those things. I get them. Those are funny. Would you pay $20? No. Okay. No. See, they recognize that. Oh my god, if this is not the best fucking thing on this... I'm a, oh my god. I'm a Young Bucks fan. And it's a fan. And it's a fucking fan. <laughs> totally worth the five ninety nine. See, they're like hyper self-aware. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're so self-aware, their merch is self-aware. <laughs> oh my god. DVDs. Oh, and now apparently High Spots has like a WWE Network type thing. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. And we got yeah. Killing the Business joggers. Kill- oh, yeah, because they're killing the business. I feel like everyone is told that they're killing the business now. And these guys are just killing it. It's all that, together. I mean, you know what? I was going to say, that's a topic for another show. Are they killing the business? Oh, fuck well, How no. do you feel? That's... that's the Bullet Club and the Young Bucks are why I started watching wrestling again. I feel like they're killing the business as old school knows it. Yeah. If that, and they're not killing the business, they're revolving the business. Yeah. Because I, I feel like... Let's bring back... What? Oh, what the, the hell? The Super Kick of <laughs> And it's on sale. Okay, click on that. If that... If what size is that coming? Oh, I mean, I'm on a diet. Sold out, though. Oh, see, they're too good. Okay, let's let's say for a second. All right. Kayfabe is still very much a thing. I and still the don't Bucks, think they're ruining it. If anything, they're bettering it. No, 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 but, but here, here's where I'm getting to. The Young Bucks are a heel faction. Bullet Club is a heel faction. By those standards, they should not have any merch. I saw. Oh, so that's what the little things we saw in the, the commercial were. Micro brawlers. S- little stuffed young bucks. Yeah, I need those. Oh, no, they're not Oh, plastic here. figure. Jesus Christ. Ten bucks, I need that. For the set? I think so. Oh, no. For each one. But oh, still. that's not bad. Okay. But, Kayfabe still exists. Which I Kayfabe is still exist. Well, and it does too. And I, but that's what I'm saying is they're revolving it. Because where I think this is very recent, Chris Jericho didn't want any merch because he was a heel. People should not be wearing his merch in the crowd. Props to Jericho mm-hmm. for you know being that dedicated. Also, I don't. I feel like Jericho probably doesn't need the money. Exactly. But I also kind of hate that because there are people who think that uh, the Young Bucks shouldn't have a merch store, that most heels shouldn't have merch, which is insane. <laughs> are you kidding me? He'll be selling you anything. No, by old school standards, they should not have any merch. They just. 
old school standards, heels being heels, should be selling you things. They ter- they're taking your money. Okay, that's one way of doing it. Yeah. But I don't think most old school heels, I mean, besides like maybe <clears throat> Bobby Heenan were like that. Or, or Ted DiBiase. Like, okay, they're selling a fan. <laughs> they're kind of taking advantage of their fans. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> now, no, it's not overpriced, and I, I'm sure the quality of the stuff they're selling is good. It probably is, but to s- <sighs> selling autograph, an autograph picture, twenty seven dollars. I'm not paying. Sorry, guys, I'm not paying twenty seven dollars. That's uh, that's a heel move to me. That's pretty cool, though. That is pretty fucking cool. Because <laughs> it's Marty Skrull. Matt and Nick. And it's the Super Villains autographed 8x10 for $27. Now, that, that's... You and me have both been to conventions where celebrities of a much lesser status will charge you way more than that. For one autograph, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. That's that, really not bad. Yeah, it's really not bad. A worn Bullet Club shirt. See, that's that's fifty a bucks. <laughs> I wore this shirt. Pay me more. <laughs> like, I think it's heel as hell. Yeah. To sell merchandise. Now it's also as a face. I mean, you can also sell merchandise. Like, yeah, support. They me. should sell more. Like Cena does. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but super kick leggings. Oh, Kim would wear those. They're sold out. Yeah. Super kick party stickers. Oh, Do man, the leggings is... have the tassels? <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. If they did, because that's how you know people super kick. Yes. It's the tassels. Uh, Young Bucks are the best. Yep. Good job, guys. Yeah, they invaded Raw. That was an incredible the speech. Was breathtaking. <laughs> you have to watch the speech. Brought a tear to my eye. Yeah, I, I felt something. It was yeah, almost nostalgic. It's almost nostalgic. <laughs> You'll see what we're talking about. What do you think about the cease and desist thing? I think it's all work. Yeah? Yeah, 100%. I think all of this is. Like 120,000%. <laughs> Do you think we're going to see the Bullet Club soon in WWE? I feel like they don't need them. Not soon, but I, we will. It's got to lead to just a major invasion. I think End, we're going to... Of NWO, or rather, outsider proportions. We're, I think we're going to see something huge. Not soon, though. No? I think they're going to tease the hell out of us. I really want to see the club of Anderson Gallo's... AJ and Finn versus the Elite. That, to me, is ideal. Or even winning the Elite, being the Bullet Club, yeah. and facing Team WWE. Well, yeah. And, dog, oh, that's when Cena comes back. Yeah. See, it writes itself. I don't want to do it. There we go. Oh, my God. That'd be Matt fantastic. Jackson, ring worn, tasseled t shirt from New Japan Pro Wrestling Dominion. $100. $100. It's signed and everything. But yeah, I think selling... I wore this, give me $100. <laughs> this is pretty heel. Oh, uh, that is too cool, though. I would have paid 100 bucks for that. Yeah. That would go in a frame somewhere. That would be pretty awesome. Hey, Young Bucks, you should sponsor this podcast. Yeah. Guys. <laughs> buddies. We need to get merch. <laughs> we can do it. I don't know how. I need to figure it out. Tell me how in the comments. We'll figure it out. We'll have merch. We'll merch it like, like the Young Bucks do. Yeah. That's Get your villains merch. <laughs> we could. I mean, we have logos in the ring. Yeah, we do. We really do. So, I have like three new logos. Yeah? Yeah, they all suck. <laughs> I think. I don't know. We'll see. All right, so moving on, because we could probably just talk about the Young Bucks and Bullet Club for days. Yeah, how great they are. Yeah, that's... Let's move on to something else now I'm loving, and that's Enzo More being Cruiserweight Champion. All right, now I didn't want to say anything until you hit the record button, but you keep saying how we're going to talk about how he's a good champion. 
Tell me how. What do you mean? Tell me how he's a good champion. Oh, tell you how he's a good champion. Yeah, because you kept saying that, and I was like, well, I'm just so, going to keep my mouth shut until you hit record. Enzo has been a face for a while. Right. I, he was a face during the whole Kim and Cat. Yeah, he, he was a face during that, that feud. That unfortunate feud with him and Cass. Yeah. Um, he is just a lovable, almost Cena-level figure that sells merch like crazy. So when he kicked the heel in the nuts and rolled him up to win the championship, did you watch Raw? No. He cut an incredible promo, and then... Uh, like the whole locker, he cut a, a promo on the whole two hundred five locker room. Hmm. It was great. Okay, just I saying how say they needed him. They they weren't cutting it. Uh, that they need somebody like him on their show, and uh, he is Mister Two Hundred Five Live. Whatever he was cut, I think he's saying it now. Is they're changing the name to the Zo Show. Oh, and uh, they even did a thing. I think this was after the show. Braun Strowman came out and murdered Enzo. Oh, really? To just put him over and was more of a face. Mm-hmm. And then, remember way back in the day, I think it was a SmackDown, where, like, every face got in his finisher on somebody. I can't remember who. Yeah. That's what they did. I saw that. That was um, really cool. Uh, someone that was involved said that gave a good reason why they did it. Yeah, because he talked shit about all of them. Yeah, but it was, it was like we didn't jump him. We jumped basically like the idea of him. Basically. Yeah, exactly. It's 205 Live has very much been what wrestling fans have been asking for. We want a wrestling show. It's been a high flying, technical, and just fantastic wrestling. Right. But no one really watches it. It's one of the lowest rated shows. Right. Lowest watch shows, whatever you want to say. Um, when they have tried doing stories, like with Alicia Fox, it fell flat. Yeah. I think it took way too long. So bringing in a star like Enzo Amore, because they've been doing more sh- spots on Raw itself for the 205 Live. Okay. Is needed. <sighs> and the fact that they're taking this guy that could have been a face and making him a heel, and somehow making a guy like Enzo Amore a fucking monster heel? Because... I was fucking pissed when he won that championship. Yeah. Not happy. That was a low point of the pay-per-view. Yeah. Now it's like, all right, now I legitimately hate you Mm -hmm. for all the reasons that I'm happy about. Right. I I want back and whoop his ass. Right. I want TJ Perkins. I want someone else to step up and beat him. Oh, yeah. This is what they needed. And now they need to get Kalisto. And we've been saying that, by the way. I, well, Kalisto I, or Enzo? Enzo. Yeah. We've like, been saying that forever. They need these, like... Okay, you're not going to do anything with Enzo? Put him on fucking 205 Live. Yep. That's what they're not going to do anything with Kalisto? Put him on 205 Live. Yeah. You know, you have all these guys. Velveteen Dream, I think, is probably about 205. No, he's actually he's pretty big. Uh, you know who's surprisingly 205? Who? Alistair Black. Oh, Christ, really? Yeah. They Yeah, if they're not going to do anything with him on NXT, if they're, like, done with him... No, I think he's I started think he's a few with Velveteen Dream. Did he? Mm-hmm. Okay. Which is going to be cool. I'm going to go back and wa- watch all the stuff that I missed with him in it. Yeah. Uh, so once they're done with Alistair, which... If they're not going to put the championship on him, they need to just put him on the main roster. He could go to 205 Live. So there is... Alistair Black, Kalisto, Enzo. I'd say Neville's a, very much at the top end. Oh, yeah. Um, TJ Perkins. I saw that he was either released. Oh, I saw he was going to commentary. Then I saw yeah. he was released. The release thing I think was fake. Because um, I also saw a bunch of people posting that that typically yeah. don't post true shit. Um, so, yeah, he's on commentary and I don't know why. I think he might be injured. Yeah, that I get. Even still, there are so many guys. I think they're releasing a documentary about Jack Gallagher. They could easily make him a main guy. Yeah. There's plenty of guys from the UK tournament they could bring in. Oh, yeah. There's, there's just so much potential for 205 Live, and I think we're starting to see it. 
Is Pete Dunn 205? No. He's big. He's not that big. He's he's pretty thick. Anyway. I don't think he's 205. Um, Tyler Bate. Tyler Bate definitely is. And Tyler Bate is a star. Yeah. They could put him on 205 Live, but that would require him signing a contract. Which is, an, he's another one of those guys that I don't think needs WWE. Right. Um, yeah, how big is Pete Dunn? 5'10". Oh, I could have just scrolled down, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Bill 205 Wade. or 206. Really? Yep. Yeah, I guess he's not as big as, like... He's, five, yeah, he's a thick guy, but he's not, like... He's 5'10", that's why. Yeah. Because I'm, like, 5'10", 5'11", so we're about Put Pete five. Dunn and Tyler Bate on 205 Live. Yeah. Done. <laughs> yeah. Done. Done. D-O-N-E. Not D-U-N-N-E. Uh, <laughs> too bad Trent Seven's. I don't think Trent Seven's no. 205. I, I like Trent Seven a lot from what I've seen lately. Dude, to me, you guys can do this. I you mean, have... We don't have to write for you. You need to pay us. Look at that. Dude, Trent Seven's 216. Bullshit. Really? <laughs> He's a big dude, too. 216 without the beard. Yeah. <laughs> um, another thing about Enzo, and you pointed, told me about this at the store, Corey oh, yeah. Graves tweeted out, my son just ran to second base and danced like at Real One, which is Enzo's Twitter handle, to celebrate, I have failed as a father. Which I thought was great. <laughs> Enzo retweeted, or tweeted at him rather, responded, Nah, you didn't fail as a father. You failed as a wrestler. That's why they dressed you up in a suit and tie and told you to sit down. Hashtag how you doing. Hashtag champ. <laughs> yes. Yes, Enzo. Keep yeah. doing it, dude. Like, the only other heel I can think of at this point that's doing that good of shit is The Miz. Who's making people legitimately hate him. Yeah. You hate The Miz. Yeah. Well, no. We I, talk about this every week. <laughs> yeah, but no, like, I don't even hate The Miz. Like, The Miz is just, just an existent being that doesn't warrant any sort of emotion towards, which is worse than hating somebody. Like, You're crazy. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't take the time to hate him, because it's not even worth it. Like, that's... <laughs> That's how insignificant The Miz is to me. You're like, terrible. I hated him before, like when he first debuted and everything, but net when, like, I guess he was on some reality show or something. <laughs> and, like, Ooh, the real world thing. And uh, I only bought his action figure because I needed the bottom half of the figure for someone else because he wore long shorts. And, uh, um, yeah, now it's just like he's just a being that. Where did this come from? That was in one of the bags. Oh. Okay. Sorry. It was a Magical Midway card. To find Which... out more about the Magical Midway, listen to the uh, Future Villains podcast we just recorded. Yeah. I just saw that card sitting there, and I was like, I thought you'd never been there. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is uh, that... Uh, is the Whirly Dome still there? Unfortunately. Okay, because I found a Whirly Dome card in it's my like wallet. like nothing in that place. If we had a bunch of people, I'd play that stupid game. Yeah. Full of carts, but that's for another podcast. <laughs> yeah, can't get back to the other podcast and put that in. But yeah, yeah, I don't. I get, I like that Enzo is going to be, um, a monster heel. Yeah, like outside of the ring, I think is where he's going to do a lot of good. And once that's again, so not bad. surprisingly, uh, Cass is floundering without him. Yeah, he, he needs a uh, an Albert. Uenzo? No, Cass. He needs an Albert. Oh, what? So he can be testing Albert? Yeah, because he's just like he's like a new test. Test had a had charisma. Cass does not. He also had the testicles. That's right. Yeah. What does the Cass have? I fucking find out. <laughs> like nothing. The, Whole lot of nothing. The castrations. Oh, 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 I hope the mic picked up that face palm. <laughs> you did. Jeez. Oh, that was great. 
Go me. I'm uh, proud of so myself. So, next I'm story. <laughs> What's on? 10.33 market. Done. I did my job. <laughs> Moving on. Last week we talked about the main what culture guys, Adam Blompier, Adam Petiti, and all them leaving what culture. Yeah. Absolutely wrong move. They're going to move somewhere else, and we support them and hope that they they succeed. I know they'll succeed. You know, you take away all the people that built the brand, what do you have? Apparently fucking nothing because they're changing their name. Right. In the next show, uh, they announced that Monday's Refusal to Pay-Per-View that that will be the last show branded as WCPW and the next show will be Defiant Wrestling. So now it's so it's who, the people left that are rebranding and everything? No, no, no. WC, what culture just had that mass exodus of people leave? Right. So now what culture is rebranding them, their wrestling promotion? Right. And it, so it's not the right. it's not their new They story. are doing their own thing, but this is not it. They and we don't know what they're doing. We exactly. don't know what they're doing. Right. They're up to shenanigans. Okay. So, what culture is changing their wrestling promotion to Defiant Wrestling? Which is boring as shit. You know, we yeah. have Progress Wrestling and some other stuff over in the UK. This is just... It's yeah. not a good name. So, it's going to be Defiant There's Pro Wrestling to DPW. Good names are running out. <laughs> they had a fine name with what culture... So unless they're going to change all their channels and stuff to Defiant, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I don't know. Keep it under the same brand. It's all about the brand. Ask the Young Bucks. Yeah. I don't know. So I just wanted to comment on that. I think it's stupid. Yeah. They shouldn't do it. One story I wanted to bring up here was... Uh, there was a show, an NXT show, recently. Let me see where it was. Uh, it was in Tampa. And the incident occurred during a match between the Undisputed Era, your favorite wrestling faction name, uh, versus Cassius Ono and Heavy Machinery, which is a pretty oh, great team. Damn. <laughs> um, apparently, some guy ran into the ring. Uh, and got into the ring, and Kyle O'Reilly kicked him in the face. Of all matches, why would you get in the ring in that All match? people to get kicked in the face by. Yeah. <laughs> God. Yeah, no, wait. No, you're right. All six of those men could easily murder you. Yeah. What, I, what are you thinking, dude? He hates their name so much. He listened to our podcast. Yeah, and he was like, <laughs> you must change your name. Yes, that's... Yep. Got kicked right in the face. They're like, "What did he say about our name?" So don't be, don't be a shitty fan. I don't understand what the, the thought process there was. I'm surprised Cassius Ono didn't do anything, because I've seen him beat up a couple fans. Shit. <laughs> so it's there must be a uh, there must be some kind of legal thing that protects wrestlers. Oh, if a fan gets in the ring, they fucking wreck them. But yeah, but how do they not get assault charges? That's the question. It's self defense. They don't know what they're doing. You think so? You think probably? Yeah. And tons and tons and tons of lawyers on the WWE side. But uh, yeah, but any guys? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I wonder if by purchasing a ticket, there's something in there that says like whatever happens at fault. It could be. Could be. Or. Should look into that. I, I wonder if it's ever happened. Somebody pressed charges. Oh, I'm sure. Or tried to. Yeah. So. Actually, I have a book that can tell you the answer. Really? But I can't find the book because I tried to oh, give that, the book to some people. You think that's in that book? I'm sure, yeah. That's what that book's about. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. that would be interesting to find out. If you know, leave a comment. Tweet me at Best in the Realm. Yeah. There, there just have, there has to be something. Otherwise, Kyle O'Reilly's in trouble. No. He's not. He's going to be fine. I think it would be self-defense, though. Yeah, because you don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Just like if you got on stage during a concert and someone throws your ass off. That's the other, yeah, people have done that in concerts. They've mm -hmm. been decked or... Yeah, yeah so there is something thing. to do with... 
Yeah, security kicks the shit out of people too, oh, and yeah. the security doesn't get charges pressed on them. So there has to be something to do with buying a ticket that says you waive all rights to be able to press charges and whatnot. Yeah. You probably could, it just wouldn't go through. Yeah. Like you were a dumb fuck and you got your ass kicked for it. <laughs> Actually, the singer, and I don't know how this ended up, like how this turned out, but the singer for Lamb of God mm-hmm. in Germany, I think it was, right. he was in jail because he supposedly pushed a fan off stage Ooh. and the fan died. Yeah, that's a bit different. But I wa- I saw the video of it, and he didn't really push him. Yeah. Like, there was no, like, shove there. Like, it was very... Like, he, it looked like he was kind of just trying to put his hand, like... Keep him away from him? Not... It, was, it wasn't forceful. It was like... You know, like, if you, when you put your hand on someone's shoulder kind of thing? Yeah. It was like that, and then the guy jumped. And I guess no one oh. caught him to stage dive, and he just... Ugh. But again, mm. that's that. That was that guy's decision. Yeah, that was a natural selection. <laughs> yeah. If my phone was not dead, I'd look it up. But oh. yeah, I don't remember <laughs> what happened. It was probably exactly like you said. Guy probably jumped up on stage and fell off stage. Yeah. Yeah, they may have put him in prison. For the investigation, that happens. Yeah, I think that... Yeah, he wasn't in there for an indefinite... Like, a long time, I don't think. But... Yeah, I'll have to look into that. Legal things like that kind of fascinate me. Yeah. Um, another thing I'm fascinated by as far as stupidity go is... <laughs> this we- a website, let's see... Uh, what kind of a name is that? U-P-R-O-X-X? Up rocks? Up rocks. You never heard of Up no. rocks? Uh, never heard of it. Oh. What is it? It's like, I think it's like a... Okay. Sounds terrible. Um, recently, they recently asked Bray Wyatt about uh, his losing streak and how he loses every mm-hmm. feud. Mm-hmm. And he said, is that true? Y'all really believe that? He talks like he's from Brooksville. Yeah. He's, he's... <laughs> what are you talking about? You don't know, you don't know, so shh, shut up, all of you, shut up, shut up. I was just a world champion, I was a tag team champion last year, I beat Randy Orton, I beat Seth Rollins, I beat Finn, beat Finn Balor, what are y'all talking about, what are you talking about, you don't know, you don't know. He's oh, right. Geez. He does sound like he's from Brooksville. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, he loses a lot, and we've talked about that before, that he... It's annoying how much he loses, but at the same time, it's not doing anything to his character. Yeah. And, like, he's in interesting feuds. He's on TV. As far as I'm concerned, if you're on TV and you're in the spot that he's in, feuding with Finn Balor and Seth Rollins and Triple H, not Triple H, sorry, Randy Orton, and he was world champion, he was tag team champion. Obviously, yeah. he's not being buried. Obviously, he's not in the mid card. Or, I think he's kind of dipping between mid and upper card. Yeah. Which just means that they trust him. Yeah. They're like, you're a guy we can put on TV and not worry about. Mm-hmm. That's... He's got a good character. He's Kane. He's pro- yeah. That's what Kane and Big Show and all them guys have been forever. Probably has a good track record. Probably either has never or has hardly hurt anybody. Not that I can think of. Well, even in ways that we'd never hear of. Sure. Like, uh, busted nose or anything. Like, he probably he probably works People really like well. working with him. Yeah. So, uh, at least second generation as far as I know. So that probably helps a little bit. Yeah. And I gotta imagine guys like Randy Orton pretty much get to pick who they feud with. Yeah, maybe. So, the fact that he picked Bray, you know, Seth may have picked him. Mm-hmm. Finn Balor and him are have a pretty interesting feud right now. That needs it needs something, but it is like a pretty good feud. Uh, feuded with Roman Reigns. Yeah. He he's a top guy. Yeah. He will win the championship again. And the whole thing about losing all the time, but I've mentioned this on the show before. I have um, Doomsday, Best of Abyss. Yeah. 
um, when t- back when TNA was good. Yeah. And t- Abyss loses almost every single match on the DVD. Because he's so, usually the villain. So it doesn't really matter if you're winning or losing. And that's another thing what we were talking about earlier with, you know, supposedly the Young Bucks are killing the business or whatever. Yeah. Is it's still bad guy versus good guy. Yeah. And bad guy usually ends up losing. Right. And bad guy is Bray Wyatt. Yeah. He's he's going to be a guy that's, I don't know how they're going to make him a face. I mean, they kind of sort of have a couple times where you, only the because he's anti-hero. like a fan favorite. Yeah. Yes, anti-hero, yes. But even that's going to be hard for him to pull off, I think. Yeah. I want him to get a little creepier. So do I. I want him one day to have like a whole entire cult following. That would be cool. And like feud with the Bullet Club. Yeah. Like that's Or sanity. Yeah. That'd be crazy. Yeah, Maybe. you know what? That whole thing I was saying earlier with Bullet Club versus WWE, forget it. Bullet Club versus Sanity and the Wyatts. Oh, <laughs> oh in a hardcore match. In hell in a cell. Oh my god. <laughs> Not now I'm overdoing it. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. It would be <laughs> fucking fantastic. And then Kenny Omega turns on them. Oh, that's gonna happen one day. I'm gonna be so sad. It's gonna be spectacular. That was the other. That was the shirt I was gonna get. What's that? Way. I was gonna get the Kenny Omega shirt. While I was in. You know, I want a Kenny Omega weekend. shirt, but I also want a Young Buck shirt, and I also want a Cody shirt. Yeah. Then you so, get a Bullet Club shirt. Yeah. <laughs> And, like, I, I've got to be kind of picky about the shirts I buy because they're they are expensive. Yeah. But, yeah. I want all of them. Yep. Eventually, I'll probably get all of them. Eventually. You know what um, else will eventually happen? What's that? The show will end. Yeah. You know what will happen? Right now? Yeah, this is it. Listening, guys. Well, just so everyone knows, I did bring up the, the thing about... Oh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead and update them on this. Uh, he was proven... Uh, that he had thrown the fan off stage and had moral responsibility for his death. However, due to the circumstance, uh, Randy Blythe was not held criminally liable, and most of the blame lay with the promoters and security members. Okay. And the acquittal was upheld by the Prague High Court on June 5th, 2013. Three okay. years after the concert happened. Oh, wow. Damn. So, yeah, that makes sense. Like, he's morally responsible. But it was the security's sure. fault. Somebody lost their job. Yeah. That makes sense. So, uh, the wrestling show, you know, they should have had... Security should have got... To a there is a lot of security whenever we go. There's a fuck ton of security in NXT show. Somebody just Missed. got passed. Yep. Referee... I've seen referees jump in on it, too. I think the referee did. I saw somebody commenting that. And usually what happens is, like, the... I, every time I've seen one, like the match starts and everyone beats the shit out of the guy. A handful of times. Just everyone fights him. Oh my god. That is insane. And I've seen like one hit, like knockouts, like the guy's getting in the ring and the guy punches him. It's just... <laughs> I love when like people see do that. it. I mean, it's terrible. You should never do it. But it's entertaining for me when you do. <laughs> yeah. Well, folks, that has been an episode of the Future Heels podcast. Um, we also just recorded a, another episode of the Future Villains podcast, where we talked about our trips to Orlando and Tampa, respectively. It's a weird term, respectively. <laughs> Disrespectively. No? How? How? Oh, just continue. <laughs> uh, my name is Jacob Best of the Realm Hotter. You can find me at Twitter at Best of the Realm, Facebook Best of the Realm Gaming, on YouTube. Uh, best in the realm twitch is twitch.tv slash best in the realm my instagram is best underscore n N underscore the underscore realm and i'm gonna try and change that underscore underscore uh you find me on twitter sometimes at brian man 25 and on instagram at brian 1138 i'm gonna be uploading a bunch of pictures tonight by the way i already put a bunch of pictures up from orlando nice I've got a bunch of weird, cool stuff up there. 
bunch so. of weird, cool stuff coming up too. Yeah. So. yeah. Keep an eye on that. Busy. You can find all of this content at futurevillains.com. That's F E W T R U E V I L L A I N S dot com. And you can find all of our content and much more there. Please check that out. I post articles all the time. I just posted an article about a bunch of man children chasing a ball because I found it funny. Bring up our website, I'll show you. All right. <laughs> Thank you for listening, guys. Uh-huh.